The Hawaiian Islands are an archipelago consisting of 137 islands, eight of which are considered the main islands. Hawaii is the oldest major island, and the big island is the youngest. Oahu, the island we're exploring today, is the most populated. A new Hawaiian island, Liuihi, is forming approximately 20 miles off the south coast of the big island. Hawaii has just two official languages, Hawaiian and English. The 12 letters that make up the Hawaiian alphabet are the vowels A, A, E, O, U, and the consonants. Pe, ke, la, mu, nu, pe, ve. Other elements include the okina, or apostrophe, to indicate a sound break, and the macron, or straight bar, on the vowels to indicate that they're long vowels. With a life expectancy of 81 years, Hawaiians live longer on average than residents of any other U.S. state. Today's menu includes several of Oahu's most iconic dishes, including Hawaiian poke and shave ice. Today, we'll also visit and remember the events of Pearl Harbor at the Pearl Harbor Memorial as we board the USS Arizona. We'll also explore the science of skateboarding, the physics of surfing, and the history of the ukulele. So here's to twice as good taste of Oahu. skateboarders who perform ollies, kickflips, and rail slides seem to defy the laws of physics. But they've actually learned how to harness them. And few channel physics better on a skateboard than Oahu-born world champion and Olympic skateboarder, Hemana Reynolds. Simply riding a skateboard across the ground requires physics. When Hemana sets one foot on the board and uses the other to push down on the ground, he propels himself forward with the same amount of force that he is pushing backwards. It's Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Likewise, when Hemana prepares to execute a trick involving a spin, centripetal and centripetal forces are at work. Centripetal forces push Hemana in. Centrifugal forces pull him out. The trick is to keep these forces in balance. Hemana, tell us about how growing up in Oahu and Honolulu has shaped and influenced you. I mean, it's shaped and influenced me in so many ways just because I grew up surfing and skating my whole life. That is exactly what I love to do. And Hawaii is a perfect playground for that. I'd skate in the morning, go jump in the water when I get hot and sweaty, go back and skate some more and just bounce back and forth. So it was a beautiful playground for me. And what's some of the unique training that you do here? A lot of the unique training I do here is consists of a lot of ocean work. So I do a lot of surfing, a lot of stand-up, paddle, like holding my breath underwater, a lot of stuff like that that helps me just expand everything. The Tokyo 2020 Olympics, how was that? That was insane. It was absolutely amazing. It was such an honor to be a part of the Olympics and to go for Team USA and for me to be skating for them as like skateboarding's very debut in the Olympics was absolutely amazing. And it was, it was definitely a crazy time with COVID and everything. There's a lot of barriers put in front of us, but we made it happen and it was an insane experience. So if we throw out some basic terminology, can you define them for beginning skaters? Yeah, absolutely. What about an ollie? That's pretty much like a jump. You pop the tail, you roll your front foot up, and you bring the board up. And what about a kickflip? You pop the tail like you do an ollie, you use your toe to flick the side of the board, and the board actually flips all the way around. So is a kick turn similar? Kick turn is a little different. You literally go up a ramp and you want to turn all the way back around and go back down the ramp. And what about a rail slide? That'd be like hitting a rail or a curb or anything like that where you do an ollie on top of it and slide down. What is a fakie? That's when you're going the opposite direction of what you normally go. What about a full cap? You start off fakie and you're going the other way and you do a complete 360 degree turn. What's a heel flip? It's the opposite of the kick flip. A heel flip is you flick it with your heel and it goes the opposite way. And what about a hard flip? It involves an ollie, a kick flip, and then you throwing in something else, which is a front side shove it, where the board spins 180 degrees oh. and then does a kick oh, flip. Wow. Yeah. Do you have what you would call maybe a signature move? 
I guess I would say that a hand plant is my signature move. You go up a ramp, you put your hand on the coping, you kind of pretty much do a one-handed handstand, oh, wow. holding your board, and then you bring it back in. Poke is one of the most popular dishes in Hawaii. It consists of diced raw fish served either as an appetizer or a main course. Poke is actually Hawaiian for to slice or cut crosswise into pieces. To cut right to what makes poke so popular, we are visiting Mina's Fish House to learn from the best. Chef Michael Arnaud, executive chef at Four Seasons Resort Oahu at Ko'olina. Well, we first do, we're gonna cut it into smaller blocks or saku blocks. This is gonna make it a lot easier to cut it into uniform cubes. How big do you want the pieces? We like to do like medium dice, like so quarter inch cubes. So once we're finished dicing our tuna, so then you're gonna season it here. Yeah, now we're gonna season it. So we're gonna start off with our pa'akai, which is the Hawaiian sea salt, so it's, it's red from the Hawaiian red clay. Does this taste like normal salt, though? It tastes like salt, it's seasoned the same, but it doesn't break down like salt, so it's gonna keep a nice texture. It's gonna get a little crunch. And then we're gonna go with our local green onions, which can add some brightness. It has pop of color there. Uh, I have a sweet onions, which are growing right down the road. They get a little sweetness. And then Hawaiian chili flakes, just That's for a little, a little bit spice. of color and a little bit of spice. Our kukui nuts, our inamos, our local nuts. It's a really soft kind of texture. It's gonna add a little bit of creaminess without adding like a mayonnaise or anything to the dish. And then a limu, which is our local seaweed from the North Shore. It's gonna add a little brininess and a little bit of crunch. So now that all dries here, we're gonna add our liquid ingredients, which is our sesame oil and then our soy sauce. You want it to coat the fish nice and evenly, but not be swimming. So then once you got all our liquid ingredients, we're gonna mix everything all around. Once it's completely mixed, there's not gonna be a lot of liquid in the bottom of the bowl. So this is our rice. It's our sushi rice seasoned with furikake, so this is another type of seaweed, sesame seeds. It's just gonna kinda of add a nice flavor. So basically, you just wanna kind of pat down the rice so that it's yeah, so it so it sort of land on. Yeah, so it builds a nice little platform right. for it. So yeah, you can take the just fish a now. Take the fish here. So then we're gonna take our yuzu sambal sauce. Just gonna add a little bright citrus notes to it. And then we're gonna garnish with our green onions. And we're gonna complement that last bit with a little bit of crispy shallots. It's just gonna add a nice little crunch. So this is the Hawaiian style poke bowl here at Four Seasons Oahu. This looks so fresh and beautiful and amazing. Let's give it a try. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. Food. And I will try it with you. Cheers, welcome to Hawaii. Yes, thank you. Enjoy. Wow, this is so fresh. I can really taste that. There are so many bright flavors and it's such a unique combination of textures. It's what we eat every day here in Hawaii. They can see why. When surfing, there are multiple forces acting on the surfboard. Gravity is pulling the surfboard down, while buoyancy is pushing it up. Drag from the water creates friction in the opposite direction a surfer is moving. To create thrust, the surfer paddles and catches an approaching wave accelerating to a point where gravity, buoyancy, thrust, and drag are in balance. There is no better person from which to learn about what it takes to be a world-class surfer than Kai Martin, and no better place to see great surfing than here at the Hale Iwa International Open along Oahu's North Shore. Born and raised in Honolulu, Kai is a four-time national champion. So Kai, when did you first get up on a surfboard? I actually first got up on a surfboard when I was two years old, actually right here at Haleiwa Lee Beach Park. And why do you think Hawaii is such a mecca for surfing? Surfing was founded in Hawaii, I mean, Duke Ohanamoku, so uh, so many great surfers come from here, and it's kind of a lifestyle for everybody. Everybody grows up around the ocean, and for me, my whole family surfs. It's kind of just a lifestyle for people here. It's a way to express themselves and for families to get together. Could you explain how you stay on the face of the wave? I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, balance and momentum and a lot of it has to do for me is position on my surfboard. Um, if you see here you can kind of see like I have footprints and you can see where the wax yeah, kind of is, see is indent indented a little bit. Um, that's where I like to stand and if I'm too far back then it, it's going to create drag and I'm going to go slower. Oh that makes sense. And so if I'm, balance. Yeah exactly and if I'm too far forward I'm, my nose is going to purl and go purling is when your nose goes under the water. 90% of the time you fall. So what would you say a duck dive is? Duck dive is pushing your board and ducking beneath pretty much the oncoming wave. And what about a floater? A floater is riding on top of the lip of a wave. 
So what does it mean to be in the green room? So you're basically inside of the wave, and it's the most surreal feeling, and oh, wow. only a surfer knows the feeling. And what's a snapback? Pretty much a tight cutback at the very top of the wave. What is a stall? A stall is when you put all your weight on your back foot to kind of drag the board down, therefore you can kind of slow down. And what about an aerial? An aerial is going above the lip. What is a back door? When you kind of pull in and you're setting up for a barrel before it even happens and you're coming from behind it a little bit. What does caught inside mean? It's when the wave breaks on top of you. So what's your favorite or signature move, would you say? I don't know if I have a signature move, but I think my favorite would be definitely being in a barrel in the green room. It's just a surreal feeling. It feels like everything slows down and something not everybody can experience. But if you ever do, I think you'll understand why I say that. Pearl Harbor is a U.S. naval base near Honolulu that was the location of a surprise attack by the Japanese on December 7, 1941. Just before 8 a.m. that day, Hundreds of Japanese fighter planes attacked the base, where they destroyed or damaged nearly 20 American naval vessels, including eight battleships and over 300 airplanes. More than 2,400 Americans died in the attack, including civilians, and another 1,000 people were wounded. The day after the assault, President Roosevelt asked Congress to declare war on Japan. Daniel Martinez, Pearl Harbor National Memorial Park historian, will explain how the attack unfolded that day and delve into the lasting impact of December 7th, 1941. Well, the first attack took place at Wheeler Field and at Kaneohe Bay Naval Air Station. The other airfields would be hit in conjunction to that. So think of the airfields here. Also at EVA, located right here, that was the first indication closest to Pearl Harbor that something was not right. And how did the attack play out from there? Well, it was perfectly planned. So dive bombers went into what they were supposed to do. Torpedo planes went into their maneuvers and what they were supposed to do. Fighter planes were now strafing the airfields. It was orchestrated so that no American planes could get up and the optimum targets could be attacked without any opposition. The tables of history will turn but that morning, Japan proved one thing. The age of the battleship was over. The dawn of the aircraft carrier had begun. They brought well over 30 ships, six aircraft carriers wow. loaded with planes and a special weapon. Pearl Harbor is only 45 feet deep. This torpedo that you see here is the Type 91 torpedo. This drop from an airplane would need at least 50 to 60 feet of water before it could level off and run. Well, it would be going into the mud. This special wooden fin you see here, that would be put on the torpedo. And when the torpedo was dropped from an altitude of about 30 to 50 feet, it would hit the water and this would break the fall of the torpedo. In other words, it wouldn't oh. go so deep. So this shatters. And after the attack was over, they saw all this wood floating in the water, which actually was painted gray. Oh. And they said, what was that for? And they put, the American Navy put two and two together. This weapon went into a battleship and blow a hole the size of a freight truck. Welcome to the USS Arizona Memorial. Uh, this memorial was constructed in 1962, and it was the first major World War II memorial dedicated. Below you is the ship, and I'll show you that. So come on aboard. Thank you so much. At one time, this space we're in right now was the museum room. And in fact, these skylights, which are so important to the memorial, allowed light to come into that. Right over here is, you know, the memorial itself. When Alfred Price designed it, it was so unique. Look at these openings. Oh, wow. And one of the things he said, that every time you go through an opening, the flag, how it's framed, changes. Oh, now here, so cool. right over here, is the barbette to the Arizona. This is where gun turret number three sat on top. And if you look at the buoy, that's the end of the ship. Yeah. Right over there is the bow of the ship. It's two football fields long. Oh, that's so long. And over oh, 100 goodness. feet wide. So this is the shrine room. All of the names of those that lost their lives are on that wall. They're all alphabetized. This is the panorama of who we are as Americans. This says, to the memory of the gallant men here entombed and their shipmates 
who gave their lives in action on December 7, 1941, on the USS Arizona. So we're right here at the dedication well. You dropping these flowers is proper to remember the, those that lost their lives aboard USS Arizona. Lao means leaf in Hawaiian, while hala is the name of the tree that produces long, flat leaves ideal for weaving. When the two words are combined into lao hala, it refers to the method of weaving leaves from the hala tree. We are lucky to be with P.E. Ali'i Lawson today to introduce us to the art of lao hala weaving. So I'm gonna take one of this strip and we're gonna place it from the right side and it's gonna go right in there, making sure the nice side is up. We're gonna create our checkerboard pattern by okay. bringing down the first strip and then the third strip. So you wanna pull those strips back. We're gonna take the end of the, the heat loop part okay. and we're gonna weave it through right inside the loop here. Oh, okay. We're gonna bring it around there and you wanna give it a nice little snug. Make sure it's really tight. So then you're gonna take that end, see this end right there? Yes. You're gonna weave it through again your bracelet. It's gonna lock it now. So we wanna make sure that the nice lauhala is nice and moist and nice and soft and pliable. And now we're gonna actually use our and work with the cool strips and going up and down. So it keeps alternating. Okay. And down and up. So I'm at the end, what do I do now? So now we're gonna actually weave the tips back into the bracelet. And you're gonna cut a, just a little angle on the tips of this strip here. What's gonna happen is that we're gonna use this bamboo tool. We're gonna create a little space. And with our cut tips, we're gonna slide our strip through. So what you're gonna do now is we're gonna pull that strip and we're gonna put the scissors really close to the edge. And we're gonna cut it. So you see how as I cut it, it hides right underneath there. Oh, wow. So you're gonna pull up this one and then Cut it really close, and then pull it. And then you just have a bracelet. Thank you for sharing the tradition of something that's so connected to nature. Yeah, I'm really honored that you folks took the time to learn a little bit about my culture, and we get to enjoy the beauty of the hala tree today. A lei is a necklace of flowers given in Hawaii as a common symbol of friendship, honor, or as a greeting. A lepoho is similar to a lei, but worn on the head. In essence, it is a symbol of aloha. We've come to expert lei maker, Jasmine Domingo, to teach us the art of lepoho making. So the method we're using today is the vili method, or winding. As a base, I chose to use the bone of a tea leaf I put two of them together and tie them to kind of create like a more structured base. And then I would get two pieces of raffia. We're just gonna use these to wind around the tea leaf. I'm gonna tie a double knot. All right, so we got our starting point. This is for you. Thank you so much. So you'll start with um, one tea leaf with the shiny side facing out. I'm gonna fold it lengthwise. And then you're gonna just lay it right over that knot where that starting point is. You're gonna get your two pieces of raffia. You're gonna put it one time across the tea leaf. And then you're gonna flip that bottom part upward. And then there you go. Like this. Yep. And then you're gonna get the two pieces of raffia and go over both of them. And then we can get a flower mm -hmm. and so you want the top of the flower to face this way. So it's all gonna be like lined up like this. Wrap around it once. And after that, you'll get another tea leaf. Again, fold it in half with the shiny side out. So if you kind of go at an angle like this, when you go around and you flip up, it kind of like fans out and you can add like ferns into it. Oh, that's beautiful. And you can use these um, Song of India to put it at an angle. It kind of like curves outward. Yeah, so once you figure out your pattern and you, you get like the feel of it, 
then you're on a roll and you just keep going. I also want to show you some that I already made with a little more color in it. Thank you so much. Oh, it's so beautiful. You can try this on. Oh, I'd love to. Wow, these are so gorgeous. I think it matches your dress. Yes. Thank you so much for teaching us to make these beautiful headpieces. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much for learning. <laughs> Shave ice is a popular ice-based dessert in Hawaii. Made by shaving a block of ice and flavoring it with syrup and other sweet ingredients. But the Hawaiians didn't invent shave ice. Shave ice was introduced to Hawaii by Japanese immigrants a century ago, who, while harvesting pineapple and sugar, used their machetes to break off slivers of ice and covered them in fruit juice. Reggie Robinson owns one of the most well-known shave ice destinations in Hawaii. We came here to try Reggie's world-famous shave ice. Can we get one coconut pineapple mango? Of course. Can you tell us about some of your favorite flavors of shaved ice? Oh, yeah. I love the watermelon. And I also like the dream sickle, oh. which is the old cream sickle pops. How do you get the ice to be so soft? Oh, it's a science to it. Everything has to be perfect. You have to shave it, place it, right machine. Everything has to fall in place. There Thank you, you go. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. You. Can we give it a try? Absolutely. Mmm, this is delicious. It tastes kind of like sherbet. Yes, yeah, you can really taste all the different flavors. The Hawaiian style ukulele, the jumping flea, is pronounced in Hawaii as ukulele, as opposed to the more popular form ukulele. It's a staple in Hawaiian music and culture, thought to have arrived here originally in the form of a Portuguese musical instrument called a machete in the 19th century. We are fortunate to be introduced to this amazing instrument from Hawaii's foremost authority on the ukulele, Roy Sakuma. Well, aloha and welcome to Hawaii. I, I would like to share with you a few chords. And after we learn these chords, we're gonna play a song together. We're gonna put our ring finger. Right here. On the, yeah, right there, very good. <laughs> okay, so let's try and strum four times, Perfect. ready? Let's do it. One, two, That was perfect. I guess I think we oh got it. Oh my gosh. All right. Now you're going to lift this finger to the top. Okay. And that, right there? yes, that's called F. Woo! You're holding F perfect. Thank you. Now we're going to strum F four times. Ready? Okay. Begin. One, two, three, four. <laughs> all right, all right. You see this finger right here, your, your pointer finger? Yeah, yes. That finger stays the same place on the next chord. Oh, so that makes it easy. So all you have to do is drop your finger down one string. I'm going to turn my wrist all the way out. Oh, that's super helpful. This and then you you can saw, look how easy. Oh, look so how easy, easy that <laughs> so was. So much easier. Oh really my God. That. Perfect. One, two, three. Go to C. And with those three chords, we can play a lot of different songs. You think you can go a little faster? I think sure. so. All right, let's try. Let's try. One, two, four more times. Get ready for F. Now, go to F. One, you almost got it. two, three, got four. It. One, two, go back to C. One, two, three, four, one. And now the only challenge right here. Go to G7. One, two, three, four. Now we're going back to C. Go back to C. Okay. You know, Beautiful. that so is fun. the song that um, many times uh, we used to sing that song. It's, it could be a welcome song, could be a song to say aloha from Hawaii, Aww. and it's called Aloha Oi. Ready? Begin.
world-class surfers emerge from the barrel of a towering wave, and Olympic skateboarders masterfully channel the laws of physics. Oahu drives the popularity of pokey and spreads the soothing sounds of the ukulele. Oahu is twice as good! Ahui ho! Twice as Good with Hadley and Delaney is brought to you by Mila. Emma Besser, forever better. Mila. And by Cuties. Cute, you can eat. Cuties.